Hello everybody, this is Chris here from the Gaming Corner, and there's a new fan game again. Uh, I might actually play all the way through this one, uh, because of what it is. Uh, it's a Back to the Future fan game. I mean... Sure. I will tell you that I haven't put anything on it. It has this, like, weird, uh... Uh thing over the the stuff like that I didn't do that like with a HD quality thing because people actually while I was watching the making of this were questioning that this is what the guy wanted so okay yeah so I'm not doing that he did that himself Marty was born in Hill Valley no Marty was born in Hill Valley California to the McFlies a family of Irish descent Little is known about Marty's life except for the fact that he set fire to the living room rug when he was eight years old. Marty McFly is the youngest of three children of George McFly and Lorraine Baines McFly. He has a brother, Dave McFly, and a sister, Linda McFly. In addition, he has an uncle, Joey, who is serving a prison sentence in 1985 and is denied parole. Marty's secondary entourage consists of girlfriend, Jennifer Parker, and best friend, Emmett Brown, a scientist who Marty and Jennifer call Doc. There is an implication that Marty is ashamed of his family and does not spend much time at home, preferring to hang out with Doc, Jennifer, or the guys in his band, the Pinheads. He met his friend, Dr. Emmett Doc Brown, when he was around 14. For years, Marty was told that Doc Brown was a dangerous, crackpot lunatic. So being a red-blooded American teenage boy, age 13 or 14, he decided to find out just why this guy was so dangerous. Marty snuck into Doc's lab and was fascinated by all the cool stuff that was there. When Doc found him, he was delighted to find that Marty thought he was cool and accepted, accepted him for what he was. Both of them were the black sheep in their respective environments. Doc gave Marty a part-time job to help with experiments, tend to the lab, tend to the dog, etc. In 1985, Marty, let's see here, Marty plays guitar with his group, The Pinheads, and likes listening to Huey Lewis in the news. Tom, Betty and Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and Van Halen. He is a talented skateboarder and proven to be an excellent pistol shot, a skill he has honed by endlessly playing shooting gallery games such as Wild Gunman at his local 7-Eleven. Give me just a second. Sorry, everybody. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, we are, during this quarantine, um, I'm still working, so every now and then I get emails, and I hadn't gotten them all day, and I got it right when I started the game. But we got more. Marty is a friendly, easygoing, but accident-prone everyman who can sometimes lack critical thinking skills. He is nevertheless brave in the face of danger and can be very quick-witted and intelligent. He has shown some good and basic street fighting skills and often throws punches in hand-to-hand -hand confrontations. Uh, what the hell is that? Uh, that's about what I think of him. He is loyal to his family and friends, regardless of whether or not he is estranged from them. His major character flaw is his pride, which causes him to take unnecessary risks to show the others that he's not a coward. Basically, what's wrong, McFly? Chicken? Nobody. NOBODY CALLS ME CHICKEN NEEDLES! NOBODY! So, the, you know, this guy did the uh, Monkey Island fan games, uh, that, that kind of odd one I played a little bit of with, like, the random, weird-looking, uh... Phoenix Wright. <laughs> so... I think this is more my game here. I, I love Back to the Future. Uh, that's my opinion. You know, a great series. One of the best trilogies of all time, in my opinion. Hill Valley, Saturday, October 26th, 1985. Before going to school, I visited Dawkins' garage at 1646. Driver's license. Okay. We have a watch, and we have Marty. Can I look at the doorknob? Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Wow. A little different than uh, previous ones, so... I need my skateboard! Is his skateboard in the garage? This sounds pretty heavy. It's locked. Uh oh. He used that when we played as. Um... Oh, we're still. Okay. There are keys! Alright, let's uh, see if these keys. Well, work on that. Aha! Uh -huh. There be a skateboard there. Alright, to the home of and lab of Emmett Doc Brown. Gonna get back in time. Actually, I want to go back. I didn't really mean to go in yet. To look. Is it just, just the garage? I might have to add music to this if there, if it's just sound effects, which I can do. I can look some stuff up. Can we move? Okay. Whoa, this is heavy. It's oh, it's well, it's under the mat. Aha! I found the key. Hey, Doc. Doc, hello. Anybody home? Dinestein. Come here, boy. What's going on? Oh, God, dude. That's disgusting. Where the hell is everybody? Oh. Oh, I want my guitar. Uh, there's a key on the table. <laughs> okay. The amplifier. Where else can I go? Is there anywhere else in here? And I have my guitar. Okay, that just takes me back. Okay. What key did I pick up? Does it say? No. Okay, can I... Oh, there's a key! Okay, well, sure. I take it's this key. <laughs> Smart way to get around some of the stuff. I can see why he did the way he did it. Why not just make 10 louder? Why 11? Because 11 is always louder than 10. So, uh... Let's, uh... Okay, take the guitar. Maybe? Huh. D don't put it. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. What am I missing? Do I need to plug? Like to, okay. I kept thinking like, I know you have to ja obviously put jacks into a, uh, you know, into a guitar, into an amplifier. You do it that way, you just put it on.
Okay, there we go. <laughs> pick up, pick up. Wow, that's heavy. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Rock and roll. Yo, Marty, is that you? Hey, hey, Doc, where are you? Thank God I found you. Listen, can you meet me at Twin Pines Mall tonight at a... At 1.15, I've made a major breakthrough, and I'll need your assistance. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 1.15 in the morning? Yeah. What's going on? Where have you been all week? Working. Where's a Einstein? Is he with you? Einstein? Yeah, yeah, he's right here with me. You know, Doc, you left all your equipment on all week. My equipment? Oh, that reminds me, Marty. You better not hook up to the amplifier. There's a slight possibility of overload. Yeah, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Good. Uh, I'll see you tonight. Don't forget now, uh, one fifteen a.m. Twin Pines Mall. Right. Damn, I'm late for school. Well, are those the clocks? Yeah, it's eight o'clock. Oh, my experiment worked. They're all exactly twenty-five minutes slow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that it's eight twenty-five? Oh, precisely! Damn! I'm late for school! Da, 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 da. Wait a minute, that's part of the power of That's the power of love! Don't take money, don't take fame, don't need no credit card to ride this train. Speaking of Huey Lewis... At school, Marty meets his girlfriend, Jennifer Parker, and after being berated by the principal, Slacker, and failing his audition, you're too darn loud, for the battle of the bands, he confides in Jennifer that he fears that he will become like his parents, despite his ambitions. I don't think I could take that kind of rejection. At home, Marty's cowardly father, George, is bullied by his supervisor, Biff Tannen, while his mother, Lorraine, is an overweight, depressed alcoholic. I don't really think she's overweight. I wish, if that's overweight, I am morbidly obese. See, depressed alcoholic. I like how there's a sort of, like, trying to be Huey Lewis in the background. Lorraine recalls how she met George when her father hit him with his car, and she subsequently nursed him back to health. <laughs> I don't know how he slept like that. Hello? Marty, you didn't fall asleep, did you? Uh, no, no, don't be silly. Listen, this is very important. I forgot my video camera. Can you stop by my place and pick it up on your way to the mall? Yeah, I'm on my way. Is there anything to pick up in here today? No, we saw our guitar. Oh. Well, we know we need to go to the lab, so... Room. Well, there's the camera. Doesn't appear to be anything else, so we'll move on. Twin Pines Mall. Einstein. Einstein, hey Einstein, where's the dock boy, huh? Where's the dock boy? <laughs> where's the dock boy? Out of time. <laughs> Great Scott! Doc? Marty, you made it! Yeah. Welcome to my latest experiment. It's the one I've been waiting for all my life. It's a DeLorean, right? Bear with me, Marty. All of your questions will be answered. Come on, roll the tape. Okay, so can I talk? Come on, Marty! I don't know how they found me, but they found me. I'm sure that's not it's coming. Look at him. 
There's no tape? Oh. Oh. Where's the... There's the tape. Game? You tried. You tried to get me, but you didn't. Okay. Then we'll proceed. Doc, is that a... D Never mind that. Never mind. All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I I'm uh, Dr. Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot of Twin Pines Mall. It's exactly... It's Saturday morning, October 26, 1985, at 1.18 a.m. And this is a temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey, get in there. That's a boy. Get him. Sit down. Put your seatbelt on. That's it. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You have this thing hooked up to the car? Watch this. Yeah, okay, got it. This thing reaches 88 miles an hour. You're gonna see some serious shit. <laughs> Please say that. Okay, if my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. <laughs> Oh, I guess that's the 88. <laughs> no, no, stay right here, stay right here! Pew! It worked, yeah! Doc unveils a time machine built from a modified DeLorean and powered by plutonium obtained from Libyan terrorists with the promise of building a nuclear bomb. I just gave him the thing used to fill pinball, pinball parts! <laughs> Marty, let's see. While showing Marty the controls, Doc sets the date to November 5th, 1955, the day he conceived a time travel device when he hit his head on the toilet. The terrorists have arrived unexpectedly. The Libyans! They're here! They've stopped shooting. Oh no, Doc! <laughs> oh no! You bastards! No! Bastards! Yeah, it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, oh, what? Uh. Is there no save? Oh, oh. Ah. Uh. Oh no! I'm dead! Marty be shot by terrorists, all right. Uh. Uh. Oh, now it lets me save. <laughs> oh, Marty got killed by terrorists. Well, it's a great place to end the first episode because Marty's dead. So the space-time continuum, completely gone. Apparently we're not supposed to run to the right. I guess it's exactly what the movie was, which I don't remember. So this has been Chris from the Gaming Corner playing the fan game Back to the Future. I hope you've enjoyed. I certainly have so far. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode because I will keep playing this one. Bye, everybody.